This lesson deals with mesh current analysis. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 3 starting on page 10. Using a method called mesh currents instead of element currents, we can reduce the number of equations we have to solve simultaneously. Now mesh current analysis is restricted to what's called a planar circuit. This is a circuit that can be drawn on a flat surface where no wires cross over. They tend to look like window panes. We're going to assign in each of these little window panes a clockwise direction current. And then knowing those currents, we'll be able to find any other current and voltage in the circuit. Let me illustrate this on an example. Here I've got 10 elements, drawn them in such a way that no wires cross over, and it's simply a flat image. The currents that are flowing in what we call these window panes are going to be called our mesh currents. They also look like the meshes in a volleyball net. Let me assign this mesh current and call it I1, I2, and I3. We'll do them all in a clockwise direction. Now the current I1 is flowing in this mesh, and it actually is the current that's in element 3, element 1, and element 2. The current I2 is in this mesh, and it's the actual current in element 6 and element 5. And likewise, I3 is the element current of elements 8, 10, and 9. Element 4 is some combination of the current I1 and the current I2. Likewise, element 7 has something related to I2 and I3. Let's see if we can solve for those. Let me state the mesh current inspection property. If the K2 terminal element is contained in meshes X and Y, then the element current can be expressed in terms of the two mesh currents, X and Y, with the following relationship. It's the difference of I sub X and I sub Y, where I sub X is the mesh whose reference direction agrees with the reference direction of I sub K. Let me show you a picture to better illustrate this. So here's a mesh current I sub X. Here's the mesh current I sub Y. And the current in this element, as I've picked it in this direction, agrees with the direction of I sub X, but disagrees with the direction of I sub Y. And that's how we're going to find the current in individual elements that are between meshes. Now, why is this true? Well, in this example, I sub X is the current in the element up here, and the current I sub Y is the current in this element up here. So doing Kirchhoff's current law at this node, I sub X enters, and I sub K and I sub Y leave. So it's a sum of those two. Whatever enters leaves the node. Now let's just solve for the current I sub K. Bring the I sub Y in this side of the equation, and I'm left then that I sub K is equal to I sub X minus I sub Y. Another way to remember this is that when the current agrees with the direction of the mesh current, we're going to add, and when it disagrees, we're going to subtract. We are going to pick all our currents in the same direction, basically all clockwise. Let's do an example. Suppose that I have these three meshes, I sub A, I sub B, and I sub C, and suppose that I'm able to measure their values, and that I sub A is 10 amps, I sub B is 5 amps, and I sub C is a minus 3 amps. Now let me arbitrarily assign a current in each element. Element 1, element 2, element 3, element 4, element 5, and element 6. If we were to pick the current in the other direction, whatever answer we get from our first selection would just be the opposite sign. So it's not really right or wrong, just you can pick a direction, just stick with it once you pick it. Let's solve for these six currents. Now let's start with I1. So I1 is going in this direction, and here's the mesh current I sub A. It's actually going in the opposite direction. The value of I1 is a negative 10 amps. The current I2 is between two meshes. It agrees with I sub A, disagrees with I sub C. We're going to add I sub A and subtract I sub C. Even though that's a negative number, we're going to subtract its value. That gives me 13 amps. Current I3 is agreeing with I sub A, disagreeing with I sub B. So I sub A minus I sub B, 5 amps. Current in element 4 agrees with I sub B, disagrees with I sub C. 5 minus a minus 3 gives us 8 amps. Current I5 is in this direction. That actually is the same as I sub B, so that's 5 amps. Then lastly, current 6, just flowing in this individual element, and that just agrees with I sub C. And the value of I6 is equal to minus 3 amps. Now just like the node voltages, we can talk about the minimum number of unknowns. So in this example, if I knew the three mesh currents, I sub A, I sub B, and I sub C, I could find the currents in six elements. Don't need to write six equations, just need to have 
three equations and three unknowns that solve for that. In an n mesh circuit, there are n meshes. So this last example, if we knew the three mesh currents, we could find the current in the individual elements. They were either the same current, the opposite sign, or a difference of two. If we knew less information than that, then we really couldn't solve for the currents in the elements. So this turns out again to be the minimum set of unknowns. And this is mesh current analysis.